fits me. I don't know. What is that saying? If the shoe fits, you got to wear it kind of you thing. You got to wear it. Oh, I've been wearing, I've been wearing it a lot, especially lately. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. oh God, God help us. But we're we here for some good book recommendations to, to like maybe help people, inspire people, just do whatever we all need to do. Um, yeah. That's what I'm going to say about that. Let's hope, let's hope so. Yeah. Let's, let's. I have one that Matt inspired. I hope inspires good. people. Good. Yeah. And, you know, I've been, um, what are we? Oh, I finished horse, Tom. Loved it. Oh, oh, excellent. Excellent. Loved it. So finished horse. And then awesome. what did I finish over the week? Oh, Shannon's not here. I finished uh, a Shannon book over the weekend. Um, I got, I think I've got one from each of you slated up. Um, You're a reading machine. I've been a reading machine. Although now, okay, so I got the eye surgery. So now, I'm in this like really weird, and I'm just giving Facebook a minute or two before we get started, just to let people kind of get, get on here. Um, I can't figure out which glasses to wear because I had a jillion pairs of glasses before for all different things. And now since one eye is kind of back, I mean, like really like I got sniper vision for like distance. <laughs> <laughs> Watch that world. Oh yeah. When the other one comes, it's like, hold on. Um, but now I, it's the computer. I can't figure out which glasses to wear for the computer because I can't really. And so reading, I kind, of, I kind of have to read off to the side. Oh, no. With your good eye? With good eye, I'm kind of like going back and forth like this. Well, the thing is, progressives go up and down, but you can't do anything about this because you got a bad eye. And a exactly. Eye. Excellent eye. Exactly. And so one. that's why I think they do it because they were going to do it originally. They do the surgery like um, every, like within two weeks, they do the other eye. But the surgeon's going on vacation, so I can't get it done till like the 13th. So it's just like, it's been, it looks a little interesting. Anywho, what's that? I'm going to start calling you Hawkeye. I go, oh, yes. I'm going to, I'm going to be, it's going to be, <laughs> look out. <laughs> what do I see you do? <laughs> All right. So it's going to go Tom, Gabe, Amanda, Andrea. So wait, I got to put the share screen on. So everybody, oops, I always do that. Sorry. And so that everybody can share. And so Tom take it away. I will start us off. It will become obvious very quickly why I chose this book. I don't usually do books that are too far ahead, so we can, but we can pre-order, and that's right. something we love, pre-orders, and this book deserves all the attention I'm going to give it today, plus when, I, when the book comes out. It's called Lady Justice, Women, the Law, and the Battle to Save America by Dahlia Lithwick. So this weekend, uh, if you watched any coverage of the Dobbs decision, you saw Dahlia with Lithwick on something. She's one of the just foremost comment, like reporters, commentators on the Supreme Court and court and our and our courts in general. No one knows, you know, she knows everyone. Everyone knows her. They talk to her. So what I love about so this book is come not coming out until September. So, you know, we could focus, she could focus easily on all the things to be, if you look at it a certain way, depressed about, like what's not, not to be happy about what's happening to our courts. Instead, she's, she's written a book that is about all of the women, I mean, there are men doing the same work, but she's focusing on the women who since 2016, have been doing the hard work. Now, most yeah. of them are not famous, but they are people who are, you know, doing the work every day um, to, to follow, follow what they believe, that, you know, the court should be doing. So in, the, in this case, there are women like Sally Yates, who was the acting attorney, attorney general of, um, when the Muslim travel ban came in and she refused to sign the travel ban. There's a woman named Becca Heller, who's the founder of a refugee assistance program, who also fought the travel ban. Um, there's Stace, then there are women like Stacey Abrams, who we have heard of. Um, I mean, so it's a really inspired, it is actually a really inspiring book to, and, and it's something we know, we, or at least we hope is happening behind the scenes, like people are doing this hard work and, and, and not getting, you know, on television or, you know, any of that. But to see it, to see her lay it out, talk to these people, um, it is really, it, it's, for me, I found it very inspiring. I read, you know, I had read some of it. I read a bunch more over the weekend. Um, you know, it really does make you think about all the things we can do, should do, 
and people are doing. So it's Lady Justice, Dahlia Lithwick. It comes out, um, uh, I think it's possible we might move it up, but at this point it's September 20th. Oh, um, can you can you make it like next week, please? I know, I know. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I told I told Penguin this morning. I like, could we make it next week? Yeah. Um, because I mean, obviously her profile also it's, it was already like she's she has a podcast called Amicus that, that it's through Slate. Everything she does is through Slate, and um, she's just like the most brilliant mind about this subject. Um, and I just love that she didn't wallow in it. She really is looking to the people that are doing that are making a difference in the law. Um, I love that. And that's the thing that, and I don't want to get, we don't want to get to, but sure. we have to talk about things that are happening in the world. I don't want to shy away from that, but right. um, we give us actionable tools. Yes. That's yes. what, that's why, you know, all of the doom scrolling and everything that's going on that people are doing, it's like, everybody's bitching and moaning, but it's like, okay, I appreciate that. We all got to get whatever we need to get off our chest. Some people are happy. Some people are sad. Give me some actionable items to do what can yeah. i what can i do sitting in suburban suburban california do to help and right do to exactly. like make a difference yeah and, and, and these women you're you read that read about them and you're like you you, you start to get ideas you start right. to think yes i mean i'm not gonna you know i won't be like that person because i'm not a lawyer but right but i can you know, i can get involved with X, y, Z. And there's many yeah. issues that are covered in here so it's you right. know you know it's, it, pick your issue it's in here yeah. Oh, I love that. No, very good one to start with. Okay. And Sarita, I saw that you read Horse too. Thank you for that. And then, yes, James Patterson's book was super entertaining. I gave it to my sister. She's reading it right now. He's got great stories. Well, but there you go. Love that. <laughs> okay. So, Gabe, you're next. Uh, and I want to start off with one of my favorite authors ever. So love him. He's How come I don't have a copy of this? I don't Dang know. it. Dang it. Love him. I love him too. Oh, he's, he's so good. He's so I'll make sure I get copies out uh, since it goes on sale tomorrow. Okay. Uh, you know, just a great collection of short stories. We publish, we've been publishing just for a long time and uh, always amazing reads, uh, always um, the topics that he picks are, are very of the moment and very poignant. Uh, the zero was about 9-11. Uh, the li financial lives of poets dealt uh, all around the uh, the uh, depression of 08, 09. And uh, he, we published a short story collection from Jess um, maybe five years ago, uh, four or five years ago that did really nicely. We published it as a paperback original. I don't know why, um, but it was very well reviewed. Um, and this is, I think, a really great short story collection. Um, you know, there, there are a few a year that really uh, outdo the rest. And this, this collection, just every story uh, is killer. No story disappoints. So you, when you get to the end of this book, you start talking about which is your favorite story. You can't really come up with it. And um, this is an author I can't say enough of because he looks at the world through, um, through his lens. He was a journalist. Um, and he so he, he looks at the world as, as it is, and then he uh, introduces it to you, um, reintroduces you to it all through his characters and his voice. And he just does uh, just a really great job of putting you into his, into his world at any given time. Every book is different, um, as every story here is different. And the title story is such an old school classic story i think uh people who really liked um uh, his previous novel um that was set in italy and hollywood beautiful uh, ruins. uh yes beautiful ruins. Uh, uh beautiful ruins are gonna really uh enjoy that story it takes place in rome um it's a little romantic um but a lot just a really great great uh, as he always does great characters i can go on and i don't want to you know do a synopsis of every story um but they're all just terrifically done. He, again, you'll see the world as it exists. And I, I just want to read, uh, the best thing I can do is read what the Esquire said. Funny, poignant, and redemptive. This collection of short fiction offers a dazzling range of voices, backdrops, and situations with a signature wit and big hearted approach to the darkest parts of humanity. Walter tackles the modern condition with a timeless touch. Once again, solidifying his place in the contemporary canon as one of the most gifted builders of fictional worlds. 
um, yeah. and he really does as everyone stands out. So I will leave you with that great package, I think. Great and package. we're very excited. Uh, and wow. anytime just has anything new. This guy, I mean, I've never read him. I guess I need to. I, I just, you know, you know how everybody has holes in their yes. uh, repertoire. Oh, yeah. because, yeah. Come on, I mean, the stack is ever burgeoning. I know, and you get, yeah. and you get guilty about it. <laughs> yeah, but this uh, might be a place for me to start um, with stories. Okay, um, this is this is where I've, and maybe you all have all done this all along, and I'm just like getting the clue on how to do this. <laughs> But I've it's I used to try to read short stories like I would not I'd be like pick it up and want to read it straight through because I felt like oh it's a book I got to finish all the stories and what I did with I think it was with yours um, Andrea cap rushing I kind of used it as an interlude between when I was reading like a novel or something I would like like I like I pick it up like a, a magazine article. Yeah, and I would just read a story and then I would put it down and then I'd go back and read my other book and so. It gave me a whole new appreciation for what the short story collections were because I was like, oh, I can do that because I used to shy away from them a lot, you know, because it's right. just like, oh, I didn't want to read it as a as a book because all the stories are different and blah, 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 you know, um, but I love them now. I love doing it now. So I just did it with another collection. That's a great way to do it. And that's like recognizing that it's a completely different thing than a novel. It's a different form. Yeah. It's not yeah. it's not comparable in a way at all. So exactly. And so it, it really helped me kind of like figure out where I was going to put it because there's so many good short story collections that you hear. And another one that I heard is um, to do that with is Ann Patchett's um, collection of essays that she oh, just, like that. you know, that's Both another way. Of <laughs> two, two of those? Two yeah, I um, I love short stories. I mean, I like my English degree is in 20th century, like the emphasis was in 20th century lit um, with like, but really like, you know, taking a look at short stories as the major mode, um, especially, you know, uh, mid-century and on. And I'm telling you, um, there's just something just that like you can't be a short story that transports you. Yeah. I mean, it just it's it's really hard for, you know, oh. to master. Yeah. And um, you know, a lot goes into it, and that's the thing. And so I think it's it's really prudent of you and wise, Julie, to just, you know, go in and out of them. To figure out, yeah, just to figure out how to, you know, instead of trying to read it as a whole. Yeah, um, that's I never I, read. I I don't read short story collections like cover to cover. I've never had. Okay, I so yeah, and see, and I always had. I always had. I always like okay because I I looked at it as it's a book I have to finish. You know what I mean? It was like okay, I've got it because typically I'm having to like blurb it or something. You know what I mean? So it's like and sometimes they're connected stories that sort of draw. Right. It's sort right. of a loose novel, and those you kind of have to. Right. But even then, I just find uh, we have an author, Beth Lorden, who wrote a couple of really great books for us yeah. um i think she's irish uh, maybe not irish but they take place in ireland a uh, beautiful short story writer and just read one of those stories and it's like flannery o'connor or, uh, or frank o'connor right. or a hemingway you just like take it with you and it stays with you and you mull it over and then yeah. you go read because you know because that's how powerful they are yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah. amanda what do you have for us today my friend Okay, so Fourth of July, girl. I won't be here next week, so. Oh, I yeah, I'm not sure. We're gonna to talk about that. I might be at a pool. <laughs> How exciting, Denise Mina! Yes, there you go, Denise ah. Mina. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is a sequel uh, to Mina's uh, bestseller and Reese Witherspoon's Hello Sunshine book club pick, Conviction. Um, so they're bringing back uh, fan favorites, Anna and Finn, um, on a fresh adventure. adventure. Uh, so Anna has made a terrible mistake. She has forced her blended family to vacation together. <laughs> the weather is bad, her daughters are bored, and her ex-husband is just awful. Oh. <laughs> And Finn, of course, brought his latest girlfriend. Uh, but when a kidnapping happens, Anna and Finn do the responsible thing, of course, and they take off to solve the case. Uh, Lisa Lee is a young YouTube star. Uh, when she answers the door to what she thought was the pizza delivery guy, uh, she just ends up vanishing. And now the police suspect either her dad or the delivery guy. Um, but the last known video that Lisa posted was her venturing into an abandoned chateau 
in France where she finds a priceless artifact. Um, so of course, Anna and Finn know that they have to go in and uh, figure out what's going on. And of course, it's another race to save their own lives. Well, although this is a sequel, um, you do not need to have read the first book by any means to enjoy this adventure. Um, you'll just be on the edge of your seat the entire time. Um, so there you go, Denise Mina's Confidence. And um, this is out next Tuesday. Sounds like a good summer caper kind of book. Right? She yeah. rocks. Read yeah. it by the he knew she was here um, under the now defunct Carolyn Graff list. Um, and they, I just, I remember the early um, Glasgow oriented um, like thrillers that were just unbelievably gripping and, um, you know, well paced. Just like, you know, when she was just a youngster starting out. And so, I mean, she's a, she's a serious modern master, I think in the genre and um it's exciting that you get to sell her yeah and, um i definitely you know i'm i'm definitely uh, advocating that all y'all out there run right down <laughs> to warwick's today or next week next week, the, right, the, next week. You know. pre-order pre-order pre today yeah pre there you today. Go. i love it all right um and i noticed that amanda put in the um chat Cat brushing, which is yours, um, Andrea, that's coming out in August. Yeah. Just so I'm, and I know we said we were talking about it later, but just to give those who that might want another short story collection to think about later, she's a debut author at the age of eighty, which I yeah, just love. It. love. Which I just love, and it's all of her stories in that book uh, have to do with somebody of that age and what and it's it is if and all of us probably know someone or reaching that or seeing it not very far in the horizon <laughs> um it's really good it's really good so i won't take any more of your time andrea let's go okay um i want to talk about the uh paperback version of fox and i an, un an uncommon friendship by Catherine raven this is from spiegel and Grau. It's an eighteen dollar um, paperback out this week. It was a New York Times bestseller instantly. Um, everybody gave it amazing reviews. It sold a lot of copies all across the indie landscape. Um, and Warwick's was not an outlier there. You guys did a great job of selling this book to your core customers. And um, they've done a really nice job, as you can see on this paperback cover with a little step back cover there. This is a perfect book for um, book groups that aren't afraid of nonfiction. Um, so if you're into nonfiction and you have a book group, this is one to definitely think about. It's a great discussion book. It does have a reading, uh, reading guide in here as oh. well as um a, an interview with the um the author Catherine Raven who is um an interesting soul indeed and this is basically about um a friendship between her and a fox and uh, she's a solitary person and she was living um in a little cabin away from um away from folks when she struck up this bond with this fox. So um, anyway, I think they did a great job on this cover. How can you not pick that up when you see it on a table? It's a great and, uh, cover. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I um, I just think that this is going to be um, an indie. Well, yeah, it's going to be an indie evergreen title for a long time, and um, that's what evergreen means, after all. Thank you, Andrea. Jeez, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and they and that I know Amanda, who's in the background, loved that book, and 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 Adrian did. So here comes Amanda. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's so good, and I lo I love what they did with the cover. They really they yeah. kept they kept it true to it what it is with yep. just a little bit of extra that I love. Yeah, and it's really it's great. I think it's just you know it's got a lot going for it. The Washington Post said, if there's just one book you pick up, you pick up this summer, make it be this one. So, um, you know, the, I mean, and, th and that's the sort of kind of praise it was getting across the board. I mean, um, so. You have something to add, Amanda? Yeah, 
yeah, it's it's not it's not just a memoir and it's not just science writing. It's a book about books and how we see the world through the books that we read as we grow and 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 move through the world and it's it's very beautiful on many different levels it, but the the nature writing is top notch as well if you're yeah. if you are a fan of good nature writing very well said that's uh, really fleshes it out it does work on a lot of different levels like you say amanda and um thanks for your continuing support for this book i know that your endorsement has helped uh you know bring this to customers and um more of that for this yeah. paperback there we go love it great in paperback yeah and uh, yeah so then there's a whole you can like google you can go down to google rabbit trap with the, her publisher and who they used to be and are and so it's really kind of cool right i mean they're very skilled publishers very skilled publishers so yeah all yeah, right tom okay so my next book so Summer reading, summer reading, summer reading. That's what this book is. Um, so Berkeley is one of the imprints that I sell and they are ahead of just about every other publisher when it comes to rom-coms. They're the publisher of Emily Henry. Oh, Need I say more? Game. I don't know, you, you, gave, you gave my Duke it out here. Oh yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think, I, I'm happy to Duke it out in this case. It's uh, Emily Henry, Gabe. I just said get Emily Henry. Um, so the new book, the, so this, the, luckily Gabe is muted. Is, yeah. um, so here we have the next, their next big sensation, the dead romantics. And when you, so you, you might wonder, as I do, how do we, how do we keep freshening this genre up? How do we keep coming up with new storylines? Well, this is the setup. Florence Day is a ghost writer for one of the most popular, prolific uh, romance writers. But now she has a problem. Because of her last breakup, the bad one, she, she doesn't believe in love anymore. So how can she be the ghostwriter for this famous writer? Um, then she gets a phone call that brings her back home uh, to where to her, her father has died and her family runs a funeral parlor. So what happens is that she finds a ghost in the funeral parlor, um, handsome as they can be hand, more handsome. Um, and so anyway, it's about the relationship between these two people. Um, the reviews have been unbelievably strong. Uh, PW said the sparkling dialogue makes the characters come alive, even the dead ones. Readers won't be able to put this down. Kirkus calls it fun and fresh, a sweet and sparkling adult debut. Um, so the next, maybe we have the next Emily Henry. I can tell you it's going to get a lot of press. It's all lined up. You'll be hearing about it. It's a trade paperback original. I was going to ask you. Tomorrow. Yeah. Trade paperback. Okay. Yeah. Comes out tomorrow. The Dead Romantics. Okay. It's Hopefully. got Blockbuster written all over it. It really does. Hopefully we have, we got a lot of copies for the store. You do. Okay, good. Because it's summertime and those yeah. will fly out the door. So, Okay. Gabe, you're going to take I will it. give Gabe his equal You're going to take that, Gabe? <laughs> take that, Gabe. You know, when you're on top, you don't have to, like, prove anything. Ouch! Because <laughs> if you alphabetize the publishers alphabetically, <laughs> as one would, as one would. Um, <laughs> Avon's always at the top. So I'm going to talk to you about a self-indulgent presentation because I like all things swashbuckling. I like all things mythological King, you know, give me a Charlemagne story. Give me a King Arthur story. Give me a, you know, anything that might have a sword attached. Uh, and I am down. Uh, so this is, I think it's a little early. I think this is a good um, Christmas gift. Um, it is the uh, big, big, great book of King Arthur, and um, it's it's just it's just a lot of fun. It's got some retellings of some Arthurian stories. Uh, it pokes around the culture, so there's some really early Arthurian stories that are actually from the Celtic tradition. There are Arthurian stories that are you know set and told in France in France and uh, some in Britain. So the stories that were written in other languages uh, who uh, uh, 
uh, uh, you know, Arthur had a, a big reach apparently. So there's stuff from all over the European continent that's been written about Arthur, apparently. Uh, there's a story here of a young woman who's raised as a boy and becomes a famous knight, um, all part of the Arthurian uh, pantheon and lavishly illustrated by John Ha, who is a big um, uh, Tolkien illustrator, uh, really big in that world. So, um, you know, if, if you've got uh, uh, the time over the summer, it's a nice little coffee table book to look at. The art is really cool. It's a good reader. There's a lot of fun stuff in there. Uh, if you're a fan, you can poke around. So if you got an old man around the house who is into these kind of things, um, I think it's a good gift. I think it'll, I, you know, hopefully it'll stick around for Christmas. Um, but it's just one of those fun things. Uh, you know, it, it is for the hardcore fan. Uh, it is for somebody who's just curious about Arthur, uh, his history people, myth people. Is it, so you said it's a, a it's more like a coffee table kind of book? It's a little bigger than yeah. a regular, but it's really handsome looking. I love it. Oh my God. What is Amanda saying? It's me. I'm the old man to gift it to is what Amanda says. Oh my God. You're hilarious. I got a spare one that just, I got, <laughs> I'm getting doubled up on my comps for some reason. I love it. That sounds like a good one for Amanda. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm the same way, Gabe. There's certain times, there's certain genres where it's just like, even though I've got all these other things to read, it's just, sometimes that's just the, the candy that we like yeah. to read, you know? And yep. you can pop in and out. That's the beauty yep. of a book like this. You know, you can yep. just pop in and out of it. I like that Neil Gaiman did the, the forward to it. And Neil did the, yeah. did the forward to it. I love it. Okay, Amanda B., what you got next for us? Okay, so next up I have uh, out in paperback mm. uh, tomorrow. Uh, and this one is out tomorrow. I hope I got that one right. Is the Haley Mills um, autobiography. Um, so her memoir, Forever Young. Um, I mean, I love Haley Mills. And my favorite movie is not The Parent Trap. It's uh, Trouble with Angels. Trouble with Angels. Yes. Love that movie. Uh, where do you think I learned to love this movie? Actually? <laughs> I love that movie too. Right? Uh, so my, it is my favorite. And then the sequel, the even hilarious sequel where Angels Go, Trouble Follows. <laughs> I don't I think mean, I saw that one. Oh my God, you guys are killing me. <laughs> In that one, but it was like the friend. Anyway, I digress. Um, I grew up watching Haley Mills movies. Um, both my parents, uh, you know, had me watch. I watched a ton of old movies uh, when I was little, like The Parent Trap, Trouble with Angels, Pollyanna. So hers are great. Um, and then, of course, she was in the very first season of like Saved by the Bell. Yeah. She played Miss Bliss, the teacher. So, you know, definitely when I was a teen and I was watching that kind of shows. Um, so anyway, it was a beautiful book. It was a bestseller when it came out in the hardcover. I did phenomenally well. Um, and so here we go. We have it out in paperback uh, tomorrow. So there you go. I love it. Take us all back. Where are we lost? Is Andrea still here? I yeah, think I'm she here. purposely went out. Did you purposely well, turn your camera off? Yeah, okay. I did because I'm having, I, as I told you um, via email, I'm having a bit of an uh, internet issue today. Oh, but sorry. I'm, no, no. Um, I didn't see the email. It's okay. It's, is it, did you turn off there your camera you. because you don't have a favorite Haley Mills? Well, I, mm. no, I, um, I had a crush on Haley Mills as both twins. Oh, yeah. Okay. It, yeah, we all did. I Barbara's, did. On, Barbara's on here saying that her favorite Haley Mills movie is That Darn Cat. Ah, classic. So I love Absolute it. Classic. Love it. Love it. Love it. Take I mean, us all the back to the spinners. 60s. We could go on and on. Yeah, hey, you really can. <laughs> love it. I mean, it was like it was the Catholic school element of the trouble with angels. Since I did go to Catholic school from my younger years, that really resonated with me. And the nuns. Oh, the nuns. Oh, the nuns. All right. <laughs> okay, oh, Andrea. What do you got for us? Uh oh, her internet is having issues. There's that internet problem. She was There's talking. that internet issue. Maybe she turned off her camera. Maybe she's fro yeah, she froze. Now she can't even hear us. Oh, she's gone. She's okay. So um, what I'm going to do is we're going to go start the lightning round and then I'll just give her double duty sure. at the end there. So we'll go lightning round and start with you, Tom. Okay. So I have another. So because I may or may not make it next Monday, may or may not. This is out next Tuesday, uh, July 5th, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, it's called The Displacements by Bruce Holsinger. So he, we published his last book, The Gifted School, which was published just as the uh, 
the college ad admission scandals broke. Yep. Um, and that was just a very entertaining, but super smart look at what parents do to their kids to get them into schools and what cl how class plays into it all. So it was like a, a very accessible book that was about a lot of important stuff. Same thing here. So The Displacements is about a family who in Florida who seemingly has it all. They're very wealthy. Uh, everything is going their way until a category six hurricane hits Florida. Now, I'm pretty sure there is no such thing as a category, category six yet. So this is a major hurricane. And so all of a sudden, all of that wealth becomes less important. Everyone's on a level playing field. Mm. So the family, uh, minus the husband, who certain uh, revelations are, are they, things come to light about the husband. He's not with the rest of the family. But they end up in a FEMA camp in Oklahoma. And in this FEMA camp, you see America in all of its uh, forms, all of its classes, all of its colors, and everyone is sort of, you know, it's just a microcosm of the country. Now, when I say all that, you think, do I really want to read this? It is a propulsive, page-turning. Uh, he's a really good writer. He's a really good he's writer. He's a really good yes. writer. Yes. I mean, it's pretty it's brilliant it's terrifying because it's a it's a i guess a climate you know cli-fi you know it's definitely climate change is part of the story but also you know uh what our country looks like right now uh with all with so many people at each other um it's it's great so it's a I, yeah i don't know who to compare him to as far as a he's really a commercial writer even though he you know, is, but it's got a little bit more. He's got a little more oomph. Yes, than yes. a traditional, traditional yeah, commercial exactly. writer. So, and the display, it's kind of like in, you know, the, this book would be you know, anytime you publish a book like this, it, you know, he was he was prescient when he published the Gifted School. He was like looking ahead to what was coming. I hope he's not looking ahead ahead to a Category Six hurricane, right. but it's it's a great read. Um, the displacements uh, out on July fifth. Kirk is, it's getting great reviews, but this is perfect. Brilliantly imagined and terrifyingly believable seems destined to be a blockbuster. So hopefully they're right. But hopefully they're right. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I, I, I'm a fan. I am a fan of his. I haven't read this one yet, but I do like his writing. So yeah, um, really good. Okay, Andrea, we were going to go and just let everybody do their lightning round. But now that we've got you back, let's go ahead and do your um, second book while we, while we okay. still have you in case we I lose know. you again. I know it's really scary. I'm trying to share my screen. Let me see if I can find the, the book. Okay. Uh, hmm. Come on, people. <laughs> Let me see what's going on here. Sorry. Um, this, the book I want to talk about is The Modern Table. Maybe Amanda can put that in the notes or something. Yep, she'll put it in there. It's uh, really gorgeous. It's- um, yeah, I might be able to find it too. It's called it's, Modern Table. The Modern Table, Kosher, Kosher Recipes for Everyday Gatherings. And um, I'm sorry, you guys. Let's That's all right. No, just start talking about it and I'll put it up there. Okay, um, great. And you can you should be able to see it from the um, Edelweiss collection I sent you earlier. Yeah, that would mean I'd have to go find that email. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, it's a- uh, by, Is it by Tracy Fine? It's by uh, Kim Kushner. Okay. All right. It is, um, like I said, it's a $35 uh, copy, or $35 hardcover out next week. Um, and it is gorgeously and lavishly illustrated with um, excellent photos. So it's basically um, a book um, centering on Mediterranean dishes uh, to share in the main because it does focus on gathering um, and having people over for um, for food and it just happens to be kosher so it works on a lot of different levels and I really have to say that I am blown away by the photographs so there it is right there right there it is yeah yeah and um, if you can um, go ahead just like yeah uh, scroll through the pictures. Look, I mean, I just, I think they did a great job. It did a great job on this figure one publishing. Um, they're the publishers of this and they're, um, 
uh, an out. Mm -hmm. I think we lost you again, Andrea. Ooh, that looks good. I know. But I, and also, I, I wanted to hear about. I was curious about Figure One Publishing. She was about to tell us, and I don't know. but uh, their cookbooks oh, now she's back. are just okay. fantastic. So, we lost you um, a little bit. We lost I think you for a winner. We lost yeah. you for a little bit, so I'm not sure what we were talking about with Figure One Publishing. We lost her again. Oh wow! Yeah, sorry about that, you guys. No worries. This looks really good, though. That looks it's, good. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, maybe when she comes back, she can talk a little bit more about it. Okay, Gabe, lightning round. As long as it doesn't have vegan in front of it. I'm and before we get to your lightning round, <laughs> before we get there, what the hell is the teddy bear in the back? It's a I giant just, teddy bear. It's a signed teddy bear? It's a giant teddy bear. I have There's one another too. one. I had one too. Smart and final, 15 bucks. Oh my God. I, I didn't see it when we were like little squares and then all of a sudden we got the big squares and I was like, what it's been there the whole time. Shoulder? It has, yeah. But it I'm glad you asked. Forever. I was curious. Forever, yeah. Oh, There's man. another little one underneath it. Wait, it's my new eyes. <laughs> it's a good one. It's, it's, good my one. Sniper, it's my sniper vision. The good one. <laughs> okay, that's hilarious that I've just now noticed it. Okay. <laughs> My God! One and a half okay. years, Jules. I know. <laughs> okay, sorry. Lightning round. <laughs> Lightning round. A new book from Robin Benway, who did Far from the Trees, which was a National Book Award winner about three, four years ago. Um, and I think this book, uh, a year and a year to the day, is uh, a novel that's that's just as strong. Um, it's about our protagonist, uh, Leo, who has a sister. Uh, and they are teenagers. They go to a party one day and uh, Leo leaves the party with her sister, Nina, and Nina's boyfriend, East. And that's all she remembers. And when she wakes up, she finds that her sister, Nina, is dead and her world uh, falls apart. Uh, and East, who does seem to remember everything that happened and was... Uh, never out of it, it does remember everything, but refuses to talk about that day, what goes on that day. So we get inside this young woman's head in a really deep way. And, you know, Robin is, um, her first book was a lot of fun, Audrey Waite. A great scenario and it was very, very fun. Uh, Far From the Trees is one of those books that just makes you feel. Uh, and this book did the same thing. She is a really powerful writer. Uh, writing these young adult books um, that I, you know, I, as an adult reader, um, they pack a punch. She's got a, uh, there's something about what she understands in these minds that she really gets it. Um, her language is terrific. She writes a really, crafts a really great novel. She's just turned into this real pro. She was uh, a local author. She's been around LA forever. And it's been really great to see her go from somebody who was just in the book business to somebody who can really really put together an amazing amazing novel and she just she has a gift that she's that she's cultivated you know she made herself this kind of a writer uh, a national book award level writer and it's really encouraging to see and we're so excited uh this is our second third book third or fourth book already with robin um and it's always been fun and the last book was a really wild ride for us uh so we're, again we're really excited the reviews same start reviews all over the place um everybody's love loving it and i love her i love robin so i'm so i'm so excited for what's happened what you guys have done for the books I mean, yeah really nice i mean she came to us at the right time she's got the right editor i think uh in new york that really they just really had a really great match uh, but there's just no denying robin's gift she really is a really talented talented writer and uh, you will see more okay good all right um, okay, so Beth is on here and she's she thanked me for pointing out the bear. She has been wondering all this time about the bear, and I just am noticing it for the first time. Sorry, Beth. Because <laughs> I would have the rest, asked the rest of us were just afraid to ask. But. <laughs> <laughs> and so now it's I just kept like, trying to cover it with my your shoulders. <laughs> my teddy bear fetish. It's a teddy bear. It's a big bear to hide. It's oh <laughs> hilarious <laughs> though. I mean, and how I never saw it or noticed it before just too freaking funny you know my wife deborah just she saw it and she had to have it and i, I don't know it. why but here it is 
I love it. It makes her happy. When it was purchased, I received a photo of it uh, buckled uh, in the back seat of the car love on the it. way home. Love it. Makes her happy. Follow it does. Follow She's that. very happy with her bear. All right, Amanda, what right. lightning round do you have? Here we go. Here we go. So here we go. Uh, sometime in summer. Uh, this is a young adult title. Um, author lives in Southern California. So yay for local authors. Um, so here we go. Um, Anna Lucia Bell believes in luck. Bad luck. Bad luck made her best friend stop talking to her. Bad luck caused her parents to force. Bad luck is forcing her mother to sell the family's beloved bookstore. Heartbreaking, I know. And it's definitely bad luck that Anna seems to be the only person in the world that her mother is unable to recommend a life-changing book. So now Anna finds out that she and her mom are spending two months in a little New England seaside town called Rockport, and she expects the summer to be full of bad luck as well. But Rockport has a few surprises for Anna, including a comet that's making its first appearance in over 20 years, and two new, but maybe familiar friends. Uh, this is just a beautiful uh, book about a young girl um, and her summer, and she begins to learn to love herself about love and just what it means to be an ordinary teen these days. Um, so there you go. We have Some Time in Summer by Katrina uh, Leno. I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> Amanda saying, oh no, the bookseller's version of writer's block, <laughs> bookseller block. I can't recommend it. I don't know how to recommend a book. <laughs> I always sometimes get deer in the headlights when I was, and I'd be like, then I'm like, yeah, uh, I read, I swear I read. I swear I read. <laughs> no, it always happens. And then it's just like, then it starts going, then you can't stop. Okay, Andrea, you back? back? I think I'm back. Let's All see. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to <coughs> talk about um, Stargazing for Kids, an introduction to astronomy. So it's basically a field guide with stargazing tips and more, as that cover says. Mm -hmm. This is out this week as well. It's $12.95 from Adventure Publications. And it's just... You know, I, I really love what they're doing. Adventure Publications does, um, they're part of a um, larger group of um, books. They uh, do a lot of nature books, travel guides and um, regional guides and um, with a, a really great and strong kids program in those, you know, like natural history, um, bird watching and now the stargazing um, book and, and it's just um, it gives you the basics of astronomy um, shows you how to identify constellations which is always you know that's hard to do unless you have a really nice like guide and you can kind of see where you're supposed to be looking and see what you're supposed to be looking for and um, stargazing related activities for the whole family so this is a great little um, book. It's uh, ages six to 12 and um, mom or dad or your aunt or uncle or grandma or grandpa can also help uh, kids and uh, get involved in um, this cool, fun, educational process. Stargazing for kids. It sounds, I, you know, I love all your kids' books. I usually end up buying them all for my like, nieces and nephews that looks like that looks like another great that looks like a really good like summer like what do you do with the kids in the summer yeah send them outside with the telescope yeah you're out, you're out, <laughs> camping, you're out on the beach whatever it's yep. uh, really, it's good and um you know stacy is an amazing kids buyer um at warwick's and yeah. she's really uh put together a fantastic section so she really has she's really made that that is a really um she's definitely upped our upped our game in the kids department as they say yep definitely has so if you're in there around the area it's well worth and you have little kids in your life it's worth the trip and because she's she's got such a nice broad range of things um in there now it's really it's very good Okay, um, Amanda Q, I think, was going to come on really quickly and talk about um, one of Gabe's books, an event that we're having, because check out the website again. We've got lots of things happening at the store and some virtual stuff. So Amanda, talk real quick about what you were going to chat about. There it is. Oh, Gabe put it up there for you. Oh, nice. Yep. So this is The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. She's a debut author. 
Um, and I wanted to say if Sarita, if you're out there right now, um, you might want to attend this free event on Thursday because Nikki Ehrlich will be in conversation with Shelby Van Pelt, who is the author of Remarkably Bright Creatures, which I think you read and liked. Um, so the story on this is one day people wake up, it's the morning like any other, have their coffee, walk outside, they see a box on their doorstep. Every person in the world, every adult over the age of 22 gets one of these boxes. And it says, within this box is the measure of your life. And you open up the box and there's a piece of string and they're all different lengths. And people quickly find out that these strings measure how long their lives will be. Uh, so. Gulp. No yeah. kidding. That's yes. why I don't go to like palm readers. I don't wanna know. <laughs> I don't know that stuff. Exactly. And, yeah, and, and so <laughs> some people, some people after this happens, they decide they don't wanna open their boxes because once, once you turn 22, you get your box like without fail. No one knows where they come from. They're indestructible. People try to destroy them in, in, in anger and they can't. So this, uh, this book follows the stories of several people and the characters are fantastic. You'll fall in love and wanna know what happens to these characters, how their lives intertwine. Yeah, I didn't mean to pun. Oh, um, anyway, so <laughs> I stayed well, up sorry, till- I mean, I need my drum roll sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stayed up like till 2.30 in the morning the other day, weeping, finishing this book. It, it's, it, it would be really a good one for a lot of book clubs. So if you're interested at all in this, uh, again, we'll, we're hosting uh, an event uh, in partnership with other bookstores on Thursday, the 30th at four, and I'll put the link in the comments. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Well, I think we succeeded today. Oops. Perfect for book clubs. Don't be there surprised if it pops up on one of those book clubs. Yeah, the book club thing. And there's the reason it was sort of a last minute ad for us too. I think there's going to be some kind of big announcement on Thursday, or you're going to see some kind of big announcement in the future about that lovely book. So yeah, heard it here first. Yeah, I, I would be surprised if it didn't end up becoming um, something a series or a movie. It's it's pretty again, you'll the, the characters are so well done. I love and, it. And uh, yeah. All right. Well, I think, like I said, I think we succeeded. We got, we, yeah. it took my, it took my brain away for 45 minutes and Andrea, okay, crack me up. Your email just came through. <laughs> yeah, back really? to your computer yeah. problems. So, so yeah, my, it, no, well, it, or, or it could be my email too, so. Yeah, I don't know if it's the sunspot or just the gods are conspiring. Yeah. Like it's extra, a, well, extra hard today. <laughs> but we made it through. It seems like, I don't know, Gabe, it might just be me and you and Amanda on Monday. I don't know if Andrea, you got plans, but, or if you're, or Gabe, you might have plans. I too. might have plans, girl. You might have <laughs> no, plans, you don't maybe. have any plans, Gabe, right here. So <laughs> I don't know. It could be a very short um, Monday, um, 4th of July tea time, I'm but still, I'm still tempted. I don't know. I haven't, you know, so... we're just going to have to see how we feel on Monday. Yeah, but we'll, feels... some, somebody will be here. Somebody yeah. will be here and we will talk about, could just be me talking about a book. <laughs> <laughs> or your eyesight. Or my eyesight. I can tell you then all you about it. I can tell you all about what you can ask me anything you want about cataract surgery. Right, well, so, if I do show up, I'll prepare eight or nine books. So it's yeah, there, interesting. I got to fly solo. There you go. You gotta, you've got to hold the show for us. So. Use up the 45 yeah, that's, minutes. that's what's making, that's really tempting me to come on. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. We want 45 minutes know. of just him talking. I, mean, I think we want to ask the crowd. Yeah, yeah, ask the crowd what they want. The crowd pleaser. You're always the, the tomatoes crowd are pleaser. flying. <laughs> I love it. Watch everybody else show up on Monday now. <laughs> right? I'm supposed to. We're, I'm going to Big Bear, and we're supposed to. We have. We can check in at four. So it's okay. dicey. Okay. Yeah, well, we're gonna have watch. We'll have like eight people on here on Monday. Anyways, everybody, have a great week. Happy reading, do something. Um, I love, we had an author one time um, and he made, he said a quote and I still have it on my computer right here because I think we have to get over passive open-mindedness. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm yeah. going to leave everybody with that and everybody have a great week. Happy reading. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.